So welcome to a new video, thanks for checking this out, and today we're going to be looking at how to add more games to your SNES Classic. Now I know this is quite dated, but Hackchi has released their more recent update software to version 3.8. I've done videos in the past hacking the PS Classic and the Mega Drive Mini, being my personal favourite, but I've never actually touched the SNES Classic. Thanks to a buddy of mine who've actually donated this to me to do a video for you guys on a quick how-to. Now I'm just going to show you a method that I like to do it and just some peripherals that I like to use. So I'm just going to show you now how to set this up and add more games to your SNES Classic. So first things first, here's a quick run through on the update. So we got more controller mappings, we got a right click menu to artwork with paste. We got basically a more easier way to actually get artwork for this game. An automatic stable Hachi H mod update, which is nice. A meta for art scraper, so it basically keeps the data on your scraped images. And you can also put a hashtag on when importing um, pictures. A new design for the main window, actually laid out more appropriate and more easier to access. New options to easily add and remove prefixes. Basically that is something that you just add at the beginning of a title so you can actually keep things a bit more organized. And the big thing that here is that we got support for the DualShock 3 and DualShock 4 PS or uh, well, PlayStation controllers with automatic peering over USB. So the Blue Z module, which is the app that actually enables uh, Bluetooth for your actual uh, micro console, is being updated to access more controllers. And the big thing, well, is with a Mega Drive Mini, you can actually add categories which is nice because now we can actually sort out games that resembled much like how the original games were laid out. So you can add like racing, sports, fighting and action. And it has improved game compatibility with the internal emulator and updated artwork and update stock Sega information, which is awesome. So there's a few bug fixes as well with the Bluetooth and um, some of the desktop file management with important Sega games. So here's a quick run through on how to set it up. We got the download, the Hakshi 2 CE first. All the links for the downloads will be provided in the description below. So now when we got that installed to your PC, it will prompt you with some new update informations. And when you got this installed, it would say, do you need access through the firewall? So you want to click yes and make sure that this is accessing through the firewall because you will have some problems later on. So this is the state in with the Mega Drive Mini, you want to still use that USB that has a transfer data and power, not the one that the cable that actually came with. So that's pretty nice. It's more information to actually get some support. So now we want to try and add some games, which is the main thing we want to do here. So first things first, we got our SNES Classic with our micro USB. Going to plug that into our PC with the Hackchi software open. Hold down the reset button and flick the power. Now it's ready to mod, head to Canal and then install the mod files. So now these, this process will take about a minute or two. So I'm just going to quickly process this just for you guys. And then this console is ready and hacked for the next steps. Now our console is ready and modded. So on the left here you see all the original games that are listed on the SNES Classic. Well first thing that I like to do is just clean this sheet so we've got a nice uh, place to work with. And there we are. So the first things I do like to do and make sure you have to do is install RetroHack. That is the foundation of the actual hack. There are three different versions, just different layouts basically. The one I like is the XMB style, much like the PlayStation 3 menu. So RetroAg is the foundation to then you add your emulators and then your games. So download and install, that again takes a couple of minutes. And then head to your cores, which is still under KMD Hub. And this is a giant list of all your emulators that are provided from Hackchi, which is awesome. So I'm gonna install about five different um, consoles so I can show you different gameplay on how this runs. So I can go with MGBA, which is a Game Boy Advance, and it's awesome. I've had no problems with that actual emulator at the moment anyway. So we're gonna go with NES as well. And I'm gonna show you guys some SNES. Uh, I, I normally stick with the SNES 2018, which is normally known as SNES 9X. 
and then we're going to go install the Genesis Xtreme GX, which is a brilliant Sega Mega Drive emulator that provides all different systems, which is the Mega Drive, the Game Gear, and the Master System, and also the Sega CD. It does emulate 32X games, but I prefer the Pico Drive as it does run and perform a bit better. Next up I'm going to install is the PlayStation emulator. There's a couple here to choose from. I'm not sure about the difference, but this one seems to be pretty awesome. And then the next one, and uh, probably the last one I'm going to show you guys, is the PC Engine emulator. A pretty awesome emulation of this console, which I've never really given that much time to. So now this is pretty awesome. So there are all my calls ready to install. Now we're going to install the games. So the, the, you do get a couple of errors of how it reads, but just say yes, and it seems to be fine. So I just navigate to my ROMs, and I've added my SNES Alien vs Predator. I've added my Mega Drive ROM. And then I'm going to add in my Knuckles 32X ROM. And there's my Master System ROM added. And then here is my Sega CD. Uh, it, it is a CHD file. As I stated in my other videos, there is more compatibility with the RetroArch. So if you do get Sega CD ROMs, go for the SEG. And then I've got my PC Engine ROM. A great console which I'm going to spend some more time in to actually appreciate. Because it does look awesome with the games that are actually on there. And then lastly, I am going to go for my arcade ROM. So this is a CP, this is a Capcom uh, S CSP1 ROM. So that is the name of the arcade board. Now when it comes to arcade ROMs, that does need a new video of its own because I do seem to struggle of actually adding them and getting them to work and also getting the right artwork. With each ROM that you've actually placed, you want to make sure you register to the emulator that you want it to use. So in this case, you just right click the game and then you select core and then that lists then the console and the core that it, that game actually uses. So that just tells RetroArch what ROM you're using and what emulator you want it to use. So as you can see in the right hand side, it shows you the console and then it shows you which emulator to choose. So with the Sega Genesis, it will give you a list of all the um, emulated consoles and then you select the console and it categorizes it in the right place. So now when it comes to actually scraping out for your games, it's a lot easier with this update. You can just select all the ROMs that we've got listed, right click and download art. So as you can see now, all the art is in the correct ROMs except for this dino game because obviously the name is a bit wrong. So you can go in, change the name and then Google search your image and get the right one going. So here's one nifty trick if you go to your view and you can sort out your games and I like to sort them out in console name. So each ROM now is listed in the right console, making it a lot easier to actually sort out where your ROMs are placed. So you think now it's all ready to go, but there's still another step. You want to head over to FTP client. This is actually accessing to the files in your SNES console. And then you want to go to East TC folder, hit to lib retro folder, and then hit to your system folder. Now this is where you drag and drop your BIOS files. So then there's more compatibility with certain games and also some certain emulators will work a lot better with the BIOS files. So basically, this is all ready to go to ship off into your hard drive. But these are a couple of more steps and some new addition, especially to this update, which is the Blue Z installation to be compatible with your PlayStation 3 and PlayStation 4 con uh, controllers. So download and install that just like any other call, and you should find that in the system section. And again, then after this, I want to show you guys later on is the Wi-Fi. So you can actually get the retro achievements and even play these games online connecting to other SNES mini micro consoles. Now, before you go any further with this, this is the hard drive I like to use for my systems. A Kingston 128 gig, 120 is fine for, especially for retro games. And you wanna get one of these USB to SATA converters. So basically the hard drive fetched me 18 quid and an adapter then for two quid. But you also get these shell cases, so it's an all-in-one. So you can see there the hard drive just slides in and then you just plug your cable into your USB drive. So now this is all ready to ship off and what I like to do is export this then into my USB hard drive. You can always just export this to the system itself, but obviously you're only limited to 300 megs. So this is what the export folder looks like. So these are all my games and then if you head over to the right hand side it says split by console and it's put them all in individual files or folders should I say sorry. And now you can actually add different icons. So this will actually apply to how it looks then onto your micro console. 
So here I'm setting up the Mega Drive, the SNES, and the PC Engine. This is not one for PlayStation, but yeah. And then we got the arcade. So this is what the icons will look like then onto your SNES console. I forgot to mention that to access this, you can click on structure and then click on custom twice to bring out how you want to lay it out. Now you want to export to USB, make sure you've actually selected the right USB. You don't want to do any errors like that. So now this is how it looks like and it's ready to ship off. So click okay and it's ready to go. This does take a while depending on how many games you got, but with a solid state USB 3, it doesn't take too long. Now you may actually come across some errors when you're doing this process, but please actually access the actual community of behind Hackchi. They also got discos, so access them. So that is all ready to go. So to actually hook this up, this is my Kingston hard drive and this is my OTG cable adapter so these that actually picked me up for like Fiverr that's my USB Bluetooth so I plug that into one slot that's my Wi-Fi USB TP link again I'll put all the information in the description below and then there's my USB hard drive to my solid state Kingston all ready to go and then you plug that one end into the back of your snares and then on the other end of the OTG cable you plug in your micro USB power and then we got this booted up I do highly recommend getting your consoles modded as personally for me I do love the physical and support in the game companies but this is a great way to preserve your games and actually access some new games that have been developed so you can actually purchase them from the company itself and download them straight to your console and also those really weird custom games that are actually free for you to download as well. Oh, and one problem I had only with this NES Classic when I'm comparing it to the Mega Drive Mini and the PS Classic is actually it was struggling to recognize the USB hard drive. So once I modded it and got my games, it didn't seem to recognize the hard drive. But I found out later that was just how I actually set it up at the end. So when I actually plugged in the power unit with the USB hard drive all at once at the same time, it struggled to find it. But if I just put the OTG cable and the USB hard drive, together and then plugged in the power it seemed to recognize it and have no problems then that's just one tip i found out by just struggling to get this going so with your snes classic on with your bluetooth and your wi-fi to sync up your ps4 controller hold the ps button hold the share button this actually signals out the bluetooth signal and you get the flash and light on your controller like so then you head back to the Hackchi software and you should see a Bluetooth tab now onto your actual software. You scroll down and it shows you that the signal's popping out. And then there is the list of your Bluetooth signals. So this will then you click that and it will sync up your PlayStation 4 controller to your SNES console. And that's it. It's ready to use. So I personally like to thank the guys behind making this Hackchi mod. I think this is awesome and it must have took a long time to get this going. But now with 3.8 version, it does seem a lot better and a stable version for us to use. Now my problem with Hackchi is basically it is a sweet version to actually get all your ROMs on the original UI, like the SNES layout or the Mega Drive Mini layout, because it's an awesome interface to use. But my problem is if I upload so many ROMs, it does seem to buckle and you do get a lot of errors. So do expect some trial and errors but always get in contact with the guys with Hackchi we're throughout their website or through their discord because they're very helpful and they're always there for you and there's actually no problems with anything brick in your system it seems very stable version to use I like to personally go for the retro arc because it just seems a lot stable when you're actually using so many ROMs at the same time so it was a bit of a shame I didn't manage to actually get the PS3 and the PS4 controller working but just then I actually managed to get the PS4 synced up and it works absolutely fine but I did struggle with the PS3 controller so if anyone's actually managed to get that going let me know in the comment box below. Now when it comes to the Wi-Fi I've actually managed to get it fine with the Mega Drive Mini and the PS Classic but because this is a system that I'm modding on behalf of my friend that's going to be connected to his Wi-Fi I can actually can't actually set that up for him but hopefully I will manage to do a video for you guys later on so if you like this video hit that button if you want to help and support click subscribe leave your comments below and I'll catch you guys on the next video